These days, new camera gear is coming out every other week, and with an unlimited amount of options, it can be somewhat daunting to figure out what's the right camera for you. So that's why in this video, I will ask probably the most common question that I get, and that is, what camera shall I get? Before I answer that though, let me just get a few key points out of the way. Oh, and also this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later. Having a better camera will not make you a better photographer, so if you expect better photos by upgrading, you might be disappointed. What a better camera will do is remove some of the technical difficulties that you get with cheaper cameras, such as bad autofocus, poor battery life, and things like that. Now, there is something to be said with how a camera feels in your hand. A camera that you enjoy using, that you enjoy picking up, you'll just use it more, and in turn, you'll become a better photographer. Equally, it doesn't matter how amazing the image quality is if you hate using that particular camera you just won't use it so i'll definitely spend a little bit more to get a camera that i enjoy using or make a few technical sacrifices in order to preserve the user experience Honestly, these days, all camera brands are good and any differences are negligible, if any. Now, some brands will have certain traits and certain quirks. Now, you know, Sony's autofocus is obviously better than Fujifilm's. Fujifilm has more filmic colors. Canon might have better skin tones. But in general, if you take any camera by any major brand from the last four or five years, you will not have any real issues. When you're investing into a camera brand, you're not just buying the body, you're investing into any accessories, any lenses, if applicable. But more importantly, you're investing your time learning how that camera works, learning all the ins and outs, the quirks, the issues, the workarounds. Also, you learn how the raw files edit. So if you invest into one system, but then a year later you think, no, I don't want this, I want to get this system, and a year later you do the same, you'll always be just bouncing up and down. One of the reasons that I've stuck with the same brand for a while, it's not because of brand loyalty, I have zero brand loyalty, but it's because I don't want to waste my time relearning new systems for marginal gains, if any at all. So when you buy into a system, look at it a bit longer term, at least once you figure out you want to do photography, because you'll save yourself a lot of money, hassle and headache in the long run. If you hang around the online photography community for long enough, you'll be dead sure that you must have a full frame camera in order for anyone to take you seriously and get the best photos. Now, sure, there is a lot of nuance around this topic, but in general, most people don't actually need a full frame camera. Now, sure, if you have a lot of disposable income and you just wanna buy the best out there, by all means, go crazy, do it. Just don't think that you need a full frame camera in order to take good photos or even photos in challenging conditions, because you certainly don't. Now, I'm sure you've heard all of this before, but typically the more you spend, the less you get in terms of value. For example, I will use this chart that you're seeing right now. On the horizontal side is the cost of the camera, and on the vertical side is how much of the full experience you're getting. Now, because I know Fujifilm systems quite well, I've used a few of the different cameras, I will use a Fuji example. However, you can plug any other camera brand and get the same sort of thing. On the bottom, we have the Fuji XC4, which will give you 80% of the Fuji experience. Moving up, you have the XS10, which is more expensive, but has the same sensor and will give you 85% of the experience. Next up is the X-T3 or X100V. Again, same sensor, but you get a bit more, so it's around 90% of the experience. Next is the X-T4, which builds on the X-T3 with a few video-specific features, so you get a bit more, which is around 95% of the full experience. Finally, we have the new X-H cameras, which will give you 100% of the experience, but for the most money. So the difference between nothing and let's say the first X-C3 or X-C4 camera, you're spending quite a bit of money, but you're getting a lot. And then incrementally, as you go up, you have to spend more and more, but in terms of what you actually get in return is less and less. So by all means, go and get the most expensive camera, but just keep in mind that the more you spend, the less value you will get for your money. Now this is gonna be a whole separate video, but let's look at it like this. If you have a 1,000 pound budget to spend on a camera, I wouldn't advise spending all of it on just a camera and then having nothing left to spend it on. So what I mean by that is you can have, let's say the best camera you can afford, 
but if you've just run out of money to go and travel somewhere to take photos or maybe to do a workshop to learn more about the camera and about photography, you'll just end up with a very expensive gadget that you'll just use around the house. So if you have a budget of around a thousand, maybe spend about 700 of it on the camera, spend about I don't know, 150 on a workshop in your nearest city to learn more about photography, and then spend the other 200 on a weekend away somewhere photogenic so you can actually use your new camera and your skills from the workshop. In total, that will be a much better use of your money and you'll definitely get a lot more out of it. And the final thing to keep in mind is the more you spend on the camera and the more advanced the features are, chances are you will need to spend more money around that camera in order to make those features possible. So for example, if you go and buy a new Fuji X-H2 that has all the fancy features and burst rates, you will have to shoot using a CF Express card and not an SD card in order to make the most of it. However, those cards are very expensive. You're talking hundreds of pounds. Then you will need a faster computer with more memory in order to make the most of it, not sit there waiting for all your images to load or run out of space. So it's not just the camera that you're buying. Keep in mind, everything else around the camera will also probably need to be upgraded as well as the camera itself. Okay, we're now finally done, so let's look at some cameras. We're starting off with looking at smartphones for two reasons. Firstly, because everyone has a smartphone, and secondly, it's because for most people, it is the easiest way into photography. Unless you have a phone from over five years ago with a potato camera, most modern phones will have a good enough camera to get going. And that's the whole idea, is to just get going, because for most of us, the phone is the least amount of resistance between us and taking photos. And it's the quickest way to find out if we at least enjoy the process of taking photos. Also, if you decide to upgrade your phone for the camera and then you think, you know what, I'm not really into photography that much, well, you're not really losing out because you still have a pretty cool phone that can last you a while. Another advantage of going down this route is that your phone is always on you and as the saying goes, the best camera is the one that you always have with you. So by always having it with you, there are no excuses not to take photos. If you end up seeing a fantastic sunset, subjects walking past, you think, oh, this will make a good photo. It's the camera's there, it's with you, it's ready to go. Not to mention that with a phone, you can shoot pretty much everywhere and just look like a tourist. The moment you whip out something like this, like at the X-T4, in a particular location, you will definitely get stopped by security. Some people will say, oh, you can't use proper cameras here, you can only use phones, etc. With a phone, you just don't have to worry about any of that. Of course, there are plenty of downsides with using a phone, from not the best image quality, awful ergonomics, and the fact that you can just get distracted every two minutes by going on Instagram or other social media. It's definitely not the best experience, but it's certainly the best entry level experience without having to invest into other gear and it's certainly enough for you to get an idea if you will actually enjoy it. Next up is a fixed lens camera such as the Fuji X100, Ricoh GR or the Sony RX100. This is a great option for those who want to take photography to the next level but don't want the complexity and the hassle of having interchangeable lens cameras. Also, by having everything in one small package, it means less to carry around with you, which will ultimately make photography more enjoyable. The main downside of these systems, aside from that you're stuck with one focal length, which again, I don't really think is a downside, but for many people it is, but the main downside is the fact they are quite expensive. The X100 cameras can be over a thousand pounds. In this particular case, what I would suggest is to either buy a used one or just look at the one or two models below because you will get a great deal and you'll still have, you know, 80% of the camera compared to the latest one. And if you are going to be taking your photography more seriously, then having one of these cameras is going to be a huge advantage over just using your phone. Firstly, you have a bigger sensor, so you'll have much better quality images. You have an actual physical camera with customizable buttons, good ergonomics, and you don't get the distractions that you would with a phone. So overall, you'll have a very compelling package. And because it's very small, as I mentioned, it doesn't add any more to your daily carry, so it wouldn't really be a big barrier. 
between taking a camera or not taking a camera when you go out. And the final positive for having one of these cameras is if later down the line you do go for a much bigger system with bigger lenses, etc., you can still keep this camera as your little point and shoot for weekends or for when you don't really want to focus on photography all that much but have a camera with you just in case. At this point, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is my main portfolio where people come to see my best work. I have full control of how my work is presented and interacted with. Squarespace is also the hub for my business, my newsletter, and my travel photography blog. Finally, I use Squarespace as my social media landing page and my digital business card. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, having your own website is never a bad idea. So if this is something that interests you, click the link below to get a free trial followed by 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching. Now we're on to the most popular type of camera, which is an interchangeable lens camera. As the name suggests, you can change lenses. Now, because of the vast amount of choice, I will split this into four sections. Also for this video, I'm assuming that you'll pick up the camera with a kit lens, because if we start going into lenses, that's a whole separate thing. I've done a few videos on it, but for the purpose of this video, we're saying camera body with a kit lens. As for brands, I will only cover Fuji, Sony, and Canon, simply because they're the ones that I've used before. I've not used any of the other ones before. If you have your own camera brands that I'm not mentioning that you think will fit in, please use the comment section for that so then others can benefit as well. Finally, as with the fixed lens cameras, if you look at any of these options and you think that's a little bit too expensive for me, just have a look at used cameras or even the one or two models before that. The entry level cameras go as follows. We have the Fuji X-T20, we have the Sony A6000, and the Canon M5. For these cameras, we're looking at around 500 pounds, which in my opinion is a very good entry point in terms of how much you're spending versus what you're getting in return. Also at this price point, if you do buy a camera, you use it for a few months and you think, you know what, this is not for me, you can still sell it and get most of your money back, unlike buying the latest high-end camera, where you can lose quite a bit the moment you take it out of the box. And finally, all of these cameras have pretty much everything you need to get going. You have great APS-C sensors, and you have good ergonomics, certainly on the M5 and the X-T20, and a very small and lightweight package. Now, if it was up to me to recommend one, I would say go with the Canon M5. It's actually the one that I started on, and overall, I absolutely loved that camera. Now let's look at some mid-level cameras, specifically the Fujifilm X-T3, the Sony A6400, and the Canon M6 Mark II. So let's assume you've been using your phone for a while and you think, I love photography, I definitely wanna get into it. I don't really wanna get an entry-level camera. I'm happy to spend a little bit more, maybe around a thousand pounds to have a system that I can keep for a bit longer. Then this is definitely an entry point that I would recommend because for this money you're getting pretty much professional level cameras, but at a good price. Now, if I had to pick one, I would definitely go with the Fuji X-T3. Sure, I'm a bit biased because I had one for years and I absolutely loved using it. And that's one of the reasons why I recommend it. It was such a joy to use. The buttons were great, the ergonomics were great. And overall, I enjoyed using that camera, which meant I used it more often and I became a better photographer because I was out with it more frequently. But another reason why I would say the X-T3 is because you're investing into a system that was that's not going to change too much in terms of the lens mount. So if you, let's say, buy a very nice lens in two months time, you don't have to worry about changing it if you then decide to upgrade to an X-T5 or an X-T6 in like three, four years, etc. However, if you go for the Canon, for example, which has an M mount lens system, and then you decide, you know what, I want to upgrade to the bigger cameras, then you have to change the entire lens system as well. Sure, you can adapt it, but it's just more cost and more pain, and eventually you'll end up selling all your Canon M lenses to get the other lenses. So again, looking a bit more longer term, out of all the cameras here, the Fuji is probably the best value. Okay, now we're on to the premium category, which consists of the Fuji X-T4, the Sony A6600, and the Canon R10. The Canon being the most notable one here because you're finally getting the more professional lens mount, and it opens up to a whole world 
of lenses that you don't then need to sell if you decide to get a better camera in the future. Now in this category, the cameras will cost at around 1500 pounds, give or take. And generally speaking, they are just slightly beefed up versions of the previous mid-level category. So my advice here is only go for any of these cameras if you really have the disposable income or if you just want the specific features that they come with. So for example, if you want the flip screen of the X-T4 or you want the better battery life or the IBIS, and of course you're gonna have to go for this camera. However, if these things are not important to you, then I would save the few hundred pounds and actually go for the X-T3 and then spend that money on either a workshop or a plane ticket to go somewhere cool and take photos. Now, if I had to pick a favorite, I would probably go for the X-T4 again, because out of all those cameras, it's just the one that in my opinion is the most complete in terms of the features you get, the money you pay, and the lens ecosystem with the future potential for upgrading. And finally, we have the ultra premium category, which honestly is mainly aimed for people who want to be creators or who want to take this or at a professional level and even make money from their photography. All of these cameras will set you back at least £2,000 and for most people it's a lot of money. However, if this is something that you know you'll be taking very seriously, chances are you would have been taking photos for quite a while before considering these cameras, then they're definitely worth the money because you will get the most out of them, the best performance, and actually they will last for a very long time. If we take the Fuji X-H2, which is one of the cameras in this category that's just come out, that camera will last for years and years and years. So you'll definitely get the most out of it. Now, the other two cameras in this category is the Canon R7 and the Sony A7R4. Now the A7R4 is actually considerably more expensive than the other two, and also it's full frame. However, it's the best Sony that I could find that would fit into this group in terms of general performance. Now, if I had to pick one of these, I would actually go for the Sony to be honest, because even though it's more expensive than the other two, you're gonna be getting probably the best video performance, fantastic image quality, the best build quality, and I would say the best lens lineup and lens choice. Now the Fuji X-H2 is good. I don't think I will get it. I'm gonna wait for the X-T5 and see what that looks like. Um, but if you're already invested in, let's say the Fuji system or the Canon system, then I would say just go with those respective ones. Because as I've said earlier, one is not noticeably better or worse than the other. It just depends on what system you're familiar with. So even though I would go with a Sony if I was just starting out in my position, having invested into Fuji over the years, I will just stick with Fuji unless, you know, somehow they completely mess things up, which I can't really see happening. Okay, that's all for today. Now I've been waffling for a while, but hopefully this video has answered a question, which is what camera should I get? As I've said earlier, if you have any other camera suggestions for those categories, please use the comment section for that. Um, and then that will obviously help everyone else. And I'll be interested to see if there's anything obvious that I've missed out. I'm not a camera reviewer or a gear nerd or anything like that. This is just by looking at what's out there and giving you my thoughts on the matter. Right, enough. So thank you for watching. Have a good week, a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh.